Uh, Tommy G drop, rap icon, Johnny Dang, the king of bling. Most famous guys in hip hop, but you're not even a rapper. Did that blow your mind? I'm a trapper. I didn't know what you <laughs> Hip hop, but you're not even a rapper. Did that blow your mind? I'm a trapper. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, Here folks. We go. I'm Tommy G. Today, we're reporting live on an American legend, entrepreneur, and the king of bling bling, Johnny Dane himself. So stay tuned, buckle up. We're gonna give you the inside scoop. Actually, hold on. Tommy, he's pulling up. My people are telling me Johnny Dane's pulling up right now in his Lambo. All right, we're gonna go down to the scene and show you what's going on. Yo, that's a tough transition. You gotta bring Love that wop. This cost me 88. 88,000? Yeah, it's 88,000. Simon Bright. I never tell the stories, ever, in YouTube. In 1987, 23-year-old Johnny Dane left his home country of Vietnam and arrived by boat on the shores of America with barely a dollar to his name. But what he did have was a dream and the work ethic to make the dream come true. He spent his early days in America working around the clock at a Houston flea market repairing watches and jewelry. This is where he honed his skills and developed a fine craftsmanship. Then, in the late 1990s, he had an epiphany. He was going to be the man craftsmanship. Then, in the late 90s... Why the fuck the 90s look so depressing? Is it the cameras? Yo, my older niggas in the chat. Were y'all happy in the 90s? Is it just the cams? All right. 1990s, he had an epiphany. He was gonna be the man that brought grilled, diamond encrusted mouthpieces to the rap community. With this mission in mind and an unbreakable will, he set off on the path that would change his life. In 2002, he partnered with Houston legend Paul Wall, and the rest was history. Diamond in my grill, man, I'm so real. His name and product soon became. Hey, man, old school rap, bro. You gotta give it up for that. And we heard that shit today. There'll be 75 think pieces on Twitter about why he's overrated. <laughs> A status symbol among rappers. And he's been name dropped by artists like Gucci Mane, Nelly, Mexican OT, and Super Throw Dave. His client list includes people like Drake, Jay-Z, and Travis Scott. Join me as we explore the rags to riches story and entrepreneurial journey of the king of bling himself, Johnny Dang. Is he the most popular jeweler chat? Yes? Because I've been hearing about Aliante a lot too. How you doing, man? It's good to see y'all. How you doing? You might be the most handsome man in Houston with a fit like that, man. Hell yeah, you know. <laughs> I'll be on your YouTube today. So I make sure I'm looking good. And what are we doing here today, Johnny? I'm just having some Vietnamese interview. They kind of like podcasts. It's a big TV channel. Yeah. This station is the only Vietnamese station broadcast nation be behind. Is there any Vietnamese phrases or words you can teach our audience? <laughs> man. <laughs> man. That's a big, the most common teaching people on, you know, it's just a bad word. <laughs> and not something I should say to a lady, right? No, no, no. Say, if I see a rival in the street, I can say, man. And they can you right away. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say hello? My name is Johnny Dane in Vietnam. Ciao bang. Tôi tên là. Ciao bang. So people think being famous is a. Uh, I think they only see the upsides, but there's a lot of pressure that comes with that role. People expect more out of you, and when you walk around town, you always have to be on a good day, because the one time you're not, it's gonna be all over the internet. And he's a guy that seems to be handling it extremely well. A philosopher I like, Naval Ravi Khan, said it's better to be rich and anonymous than famous and broke. And more, a lot of fame. Yo, bro, he just said a philosopher I like. I like that. Chat, who's your favorite philosopher? This is a real question. And if you don't have one, then just say, I don't have one. George Washington. <laughs> Nigga said Bruce Lee. <laughs> Man, shut the hell up. <laughs> Nigga said future. Yeah, y'all got it, man. Y'all officially got it, bro. These people are broke. Does it blow your mind that people will spend thirty or $40,000 on girls? I don't get it, man. They want to show up, that's all. Keegan, what do you think it is? It's just flexing. So now, you can compare rap 
nowadays with your time in 2000, it's totally different. How have you seen rap change? Nowadays, I can't understand what they say. <laughs> it's like gibberish. <laughs> 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 I'm not with them. W-O head take. <laughs> I was trying to make some money so I could get a bus down Rolly, you know? Easy, man. Just finish one successful show with Glenn. Thank the you. best host in Vietnamese, we talk a lot of shit. All <laughs> different things about my life, my business. I like you guys. Like you yeah. too. Are you gonna get a pair of grills anytime soon? If I have a uh, maybe a special discount, like, yeah. you know, he said it's called the entire V-Connect, remember? Mm -hmm. Was there a theme of the conversation today? This project is more mainly like for an all like uh, youngster looking for any inspirations, no matter in the industry. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> no, you have to say em de blum. Em de blum? Yeah. Em, hold on, I'm learning too. All right, not too no, fast. No, you have to say em de blum. Em de blum. No cap to all y'all niggas, man. Em de blum. Bitch ass niggas, I love y'all, man. Em de blum? Yes. What does that mean? You're beautiful. <laughs> to my wife, sweet cheeks, em de blum. Okay, but now for the ops. Oh. Oh. What does that mean? Bro, a nigga in the chat said I'm 12. Get banned, buddy! Yo, Twitch takes that shit dumb serious. Your joke has backfired, my nigga. Uno reverse! Feel me? You can't be under 13. <laughs> this is so stupid. Bro, L joke, my nigga. God damn. Hey, anyone stepping to us in the street? <laughs> All right, let's bounce to the next spot. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna hold on, wait. I'm actually being serious. Like, Twitch has some bot that picks up when niggas say stuff like that and it auto bans them. It has nothing to do with me. You're not getting banned from my chat. Like, your whole account's getting swapped. And you can't do shit about it, my niggas. They're very hard to reverse, bro. You feel me? That's why you hear news about, ah, uh, shit like that. So, even if you're joking, bro, they'll, those, and you can't even prove them wrong if you want to. Feel me? I'm saying that for your own health, bro. So, Johnny, you just turned 50? They think I'm joking. I'm being so serious. I just have big private dinner. I have Flo Mayweather camp, Chippy Red, CD Mayor. I have a big party at the shop. Do you feel like you're living the American dream? 100% man. This is <laughs> American dream. I, you know, I came from Vietnam, making $30 a day to have a big 50 party with the mayor. Hell yeah. So there's people out there that think the American dream is not possible anymore. What do you think about that? I'm the witness that the two of American dreams came from Vietnam. I grow up in no power, no electricity. Wow. I born in 73. Damn. The world finished in 75. So from 75 to 85, it's poor, super poor. So I just went to school, did not do anything much. I finished high school finished college and then uh, my father immigrated me be here. My grandfather was a jeweler and my, my father was a jeweler too. What was the stuff you started with? Jewelry repair, like replace battery for three dollars, polishing clean five dollars. When did you get into the world of rap? Oh, Three or four. The who was the, who was the first the rapper? rapper? Paul Wall. I did oh, Paul Wall. Real for him. And when it blow up, you know, he referred me to like <laughs> me Daddy, Nelly. And then Paul got a song with Nelly about a grill. I got a grill, I call Penny Candy. You know what that means? I got my mouth looking something like a disco ball. That one blow the grill up. Hell up. And then every rapper wanted a grill. Right. Going you know. from doing things where you're doing a repair for seven dollars to all of a sudden you're doing something, someone's paying you forty thousand dollars. Was that like? I feel very happy. Is that his factory? Most of us went to American with nothing, mm -hmm. bro. But my father on the boat to came here, right? He did not have a food for two weeks, almost dead. So as soon as we land to American, say, hell yeah, this opportunity. Convention center. Work. Oh. <laughs> 18 hours, no problem, no complaint. I work 22 hours a day. When I started first, I... I trust you worked your ass off, bro. But don't lie to us, my nigga. You work 22 hours a day, bro. Really? I just don't buy that, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. If Kobe told me that, I think Kobe lied. So... I don't think you did 22. And 18 is good too, bro. 16 is still a hard day's work, my nigga. You didn't do 22 hours a day, bro. Promoting the club, right? Man, we talk about not on time. Sometimes I wait like seven hour, eight hour, just to introduce myself to the rappers. But a lot of time I couldn't even make them. They didn't let me in, so I could pay them. Cause you knew you had something special. You just need to get your foot in the door. Right, exactly. Damn, damn, damn. 
Diamond Boy. So we're here at the headquarters. Right. One of the oh, this world is biggest it. jewelry shop, man. You never seen 18,000 square feet jewelry shop. Yo, imagine the security in this bitch. We got Milwaukee's finest certified trapper. Certified diamond. Yeah. yeah and we have the peso, peso. Peso, peso. Big homie. What does having Johnny Dang <laughs> jewelry mean to you? What does that mean to hip hop? Well, I grew up watching Johnny Dang, you know what I'm saying? Whenever he came out, you know what I'm saying? Him and Paul Wall doing their thing early yeah. on. It's really big with the culture, you know what I'm saying? Especially in Houston. Anywhere in the world, bro, if you get in a grill, you gotta go to Johnny Dang. Wait, is jo hey, hold on. Is Johnny Dang the first nigga to really make grills for real? Like popularize them? Because if that's the case, that means, let me double back at Paul Wall's ethnicity here. Like a disco ball. Not one blow candy, you know what that means. I got my mouth looking something like a disco He's white. I'm not gonna lie. If you told me this without context, I wouldn't believe the first rapper to wear grills was white. I wouldn't believe it, man. But look, man, here's history. Johnny Dang. I knew Johnny Dang since I was like eight years old. So yeah. like, I knew. He's not white? What is he? It's Paul Wall. I can just Google him. Okay, he looks it. <laughs> um, American rapper and DJ. What's his background? Origin, Houston, Texas. Born in Georgetown, Texas. No, he looks white. <laughs> he looks white, guys. <laughs> Could be wrong, man, but he looks it. He might be half something mixed. None of my business. The man. whole time I'm coming. My grill. Uh, uh, my grill. Emerald. Whose necklace is yeah. this? This giant dang personal necklace right here. Damn. Okay. Emerald Log Diamond Boys. God, you know how we doing it. Tell me what grills mean to you, sir. Everything to me since I was a kid. Since the first Nelly video with Paul Wall. Look at my grill. I used to be young as hell looking at them hoes, putting aluminum foil on my teeth. Yeah. What was it like okay. getting your first pair of grills? I got a honeycomb set like four years ago that Sauce Walker had gifted me. It was amazing, really. Like it was it was coming from Johnny Dang. Does it help with the ladies? Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Ray went Sky. Hey, when you come, you gotta bring Bird. that wop. I'm gonna try and guess how much that is. Can I hold it for a second? Wait, what, what is oh that? What God. denomination is that? You're gonna warn me about this, all right? This is $20,000. Folks, we have to give a shout out to the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Mills. He set this all up. He is like one of the most connected men in Houston. I'm trying to guess how much this is. How much you think this is, Mike? 15 bands. Damn. Is it? He did it right. <laughs> we true to this, not new to this. He did it right. And you got girls in too. Yeah, I just got my done for my birthday. Shout out to my brother, Johnny Dang. Uh, would y'all niggas laugh at me if I had girls chat? Be honest. Like if they fit properly and shit like that, would y'all laugh at me? Or would you be like, oh, nice look, agent. Nice look, agent. Your aura has increased. I don't know. What would you guys think? You're too goofy. I fucking hate y'all niggas. I can't do shit right. Who are we speaking with? Peso, peso. What pieces do you got from Johnny Dang? I got these. I got my bracelet, but I ain't bring it. And I got this right here, this Cuban right here. What did the grills run you? 40,000. $40,000. Yeah. Does any part of you like clench up when you spend $40,000 on jewelry? <laughs> nah, I feel like it was, it was like free money. How so? Because all I did was do like two songs for it. He just busts out two features, bam. How much? That is not how money works, nigga! You made the money, what, free? If it's free, then you can just keep clicking the button. It's like a money glitch. Bro, what? That's an interesting way to look at it. I bet he got a crazy discount and he just can't say. Yo, what if this nigga got the discount of death, but he said, yo, can't say shit about it, so this is his story instead. <laughs> Much on the Cuban link. 30 for this one. So you spent at least $70,000 on jewelry. Man, I spent 70000 on my teeth and this Cuban. You want me to add myself up, my whole kit right now? Yeah. Shit. This 35 Damn. this thirty. so Damn. that's 65000 A lot of money, man. This 60000 A lot of money. So now that's 125000 My grill, 40 that's 165000 This 50 so that's 210000 
Hauser. And then I got way more jewelry at home. <laughs> that to me is so crazy. I don't know if I'm Tommy P, Tommy Peasant, but that to me is like, that's a lot of money. That is, is a lot, lot of money. money. Who are we with right now? I'm certified trapper. What pieces you got from Giant Day? So I got these. I got some earrings. My shit in the car. I got this chain right here. 10000 for this little piece right here. This from Hutch right here. I got two pairs of these. Two pairs of grill. So that's like 30 for these. I lost the other pair, so 30 on them. Paid 3 G's for the glasses, 4 G's, so 7 G's for these. And is this stuff insured? No. Nah. <laughs> can you get this stuff insured? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can. I'm gonna I'm, I'm work, I'm working on it. For Christmas, so we gotta get you an insurance policy on those grills, dog, okay? How'd your life change when you got those grills? <laughs> Nigga like, lost 30 K. <laughs> looking at me like, my shit hitting. That's the main thing they look at, type shit. Who are we here with? South Gohan, TSL Venice, Baby Goat. What pieces have you bought from Johnny Dang? Two grills from Johnny Dang. How much do those run you? This one right here, 57000 Does your accountant never say, dude, you gotta relax? I'm my own accountant. Why'd well, why you ask him that, Tom? You know this nigga doesn't have a fucking account. <laughs> yo, Tommy's a, yo, no, 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 no cap. Tommy's a perfect person to bring to videos like these because he asks questions that niggas usually don't ask, bro. Niggas don't ask about that. It's a great question, man. Like, I, I'm from the streets still. I'm still in the streets. I still do my own. Hey, to be clear, bro, if you're self-employed and you're making more than 50K, please get yourself an account, my nigga. It is going to cost you in the long run, bro. Trust me. On account, my tie back. Johnny Dang around like 87, 90,000. What know? about jewelry in total? Because I see you got a Jew. watch on, too. This is a pattern. This cost me 88. 88,000? Damn! This is a diamond bracelet gifted from South Walker. And this cost him 13000 This was 4000 Johnny Dang got my set in the back. Cuban link. That was about 100000 You're close to what? 300000 in jewelry? Yo, I got bro. the TSF chain. That was 20000 And I got my Deuce 5 pendant. That chain about $60,000. Is this the biggest jewelry store? Have you seen any 18,000 square feet jewelry shop? Hell oh, yeah! <laughs> With 54 so K full of jewelry, small one first. They got diamond earrings, $50 earrings, up to $100,000 earrings. Do you have to have armed security here? You see two guys outside with a machine gun, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, I got robbed one time. Not in this shop, in the Galera Mall. In Houston? Damn, nigga, Tommy show footage. <laughs> a retail shop there. How bad did they rob you? Shit, five million, four and a half million in four minutes. Did insurance cover it? You didn't know. Man, it was scary. I got gun. No, I, on God, I don't. On God, I really don't. Did it? When he said that, chat, what did you assume? I literally, I'm on the fence. I think so, right? You already know it sounds like some rich nigga shit. Like, man, you already know they covered that shit. You think I'm worried about the five million? Or it could have been like a, man, you know they ain't cover Insurance never covers shit. I don't know which way. Damn, y'all niggas split too, bro. Guess we'll never know. Point to the head. I never tell the stories, ever, in YouTube. That's the most scary in my life. Did they get caught? No. Yeah. So these are all my small collection. But it's a one and a half kilo solid gold necklace. Damn. What does this go for? Like 25, 30,000. What's the most expensive piece you've ever made? I make for Flo Mayweather a million dollar necklace. I do Yo! a lot of money. I have a lot of private customer, like baller, but they're not really out there social media like that, you know? Who are some of the big superstars that have shopped here? Flo Mayweather, Travis Scott, Katy Perry. That's a big name. Yeah. Yeah. What Katy Perry get? I'm curious. What does she get? But no. But the people who spend being a lot, like 2 Chainz, Little John, Rick Ross, Tracy J, they always spend yearly. But the way I want to do business is, it's not one-time business, long-term. Mm -hmm. That's how we make money. It is what I create, bring my name all the way up, and make a lot of money <laughs> on the field. You're one of the most <laughs> famous guys in hip-hop, but you're not even a rapper. Does that blow your mind? Yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm a trapper. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 this is my office. Big money, hate on me. Yo, that's a tough office, nigga. That's tough. That's like a king office.
So this is an office where I meet not only rappers, also VIP people who spend like 30, 40, 50,000. And just recently, a friend of ours, Mexican OT, you were in a song with him and this song is absolutely blown up again. <laughs> the title of it is Johnny Dang. That's Johnny crazy, Dang. right? I never imagined that my name got mentioned on a lot of songs. The first time that they named the song right after my name, feature power, shout out to my partner power. Tell me about the architecture. Uh, Wait, so my, uh, really? Architecture guy I say I want an office like king of plane so these are handmade from the chair we get it done from Vietnam so they handmade and the village where they came like famous for all the king so the in the same and village and they made stuff for the king <laughs> they made it for the king of plane king of plane so we have to go through two doors layers of security this is the design department they do all the design this is an actual mold from the <laughs> customer this is a mold of Drake's actual teeth this is actual teeth let's say I just did for him one setup group he wanted a new set all he do is just call me i pick up the mall and redo it so this is her actual crew dnc this is where we produce all the jewelry you have to invest in the all the equipment a lot of my customers came yeah. in, right? regular grill take two weeks. They need a rust, I get it done in two days. If you don't have production, impossible. And did you start doing any of these type of roles? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I do everything myself first. How long did it take of doing it yourself before Damn. you started to hire and bring people on? About four or five years. Four or five like sweating, hard working. Not just like four or five easy. Just go work eight hours, go back, relax, chill. 22 hours. Easy. In that four or five years, you almost fit in like 10 to 15 years of work. That's how hard you work. <laughs> on any production, we start with this first. They call it wax. But it's created by machine. And we use this one, we cast to the gold. Even the grill, we do start with this first. Is each diamond added by hand? Right. Each diamond. Each diamond. After finish the gold, I got a jeweler here. They cut it off and they do finishing. This is still raw gold, not polishing yet. And after finishing, I transfer to diamond set. Set is that perfect size. Then the polishing, that finish mm. From start to finish, how long does it take to do a pair of grills? If it works straight out, continue like two, three days. What does a 3D printer like this cost? When it just came out, I bought 100,000 each. Another lesson here how is you have to constantly reinvest into the business. Very important. I look at this in great machines, 100,000. You know what the most important in business? Huh. Be honest. Yeah. Hard work in person is very important, but to be honest, I need the most important. Yeah. On any business. Kids nowadays, they want a fast money. They want to shortcut, man. You do shortcut, you cut yourself short. Mm. Yeah, you cut your life short too. Okay, dropping gems on us. notice about business people is sometimes they work too much I sometimes know. they don't know how to relax how would you say you are with relaxing i play golf to be relaxed and enjoy it go vacation we do a lot of vacation every year what are some of the most important lessons you've learned in business the customer is always right a lot of times they are wrong ah! I don't want to make his life too easy. How do you balance that being a very successful dad? How do you raise Yo, this nigga's asking fantastic, fantastic questions. We just train them from very young, buy what they need, not buy what they like. Do you, you want to eventually pass your business on to them? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. But of course. You know the crazy thing about that advice is, if they did follow that advice, they, they wouldn't get this jewelry. <laughs> like, if they did buy what they need and not what they like, they wouldn't get this jewelry, bro. That's so ironic. That's a little ironic. But that's good advice, though. That's fantastic advice. They need to be ed educated so they have to finish school. That's why we send them there, train them very well. So my goal is just help them finish four year college and then run business. It has to be if they like it, man. It's hard to pass on the kid. Yeah. But if they're passing the whole I'm not gonna lie, my kid right chat. Too much have to travel. My kid probably gonna be like an NBA superstar or some shit like that. Uh or, or like the greatest gymnast of all time, just knowing my genetics, bro. Just knowing my genetics is probably gonna be something very elite, bro, like in the performance categories, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. With security, depending on the place you go. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm basically six foot with shoes on. 
you ever experience a really big learning lesson in business? Like, was there an event that you really learned from? It's a crazy story. I deal with one of like super celebrity. We make mistake, done deal. I make mistake. Let's say he buy ten merchandise, and then I only roll down and receive only nine. So after I left the, his house, I do inventory check. Right away in the car, I found out missing one watch. So I go back and tell him, he's so bad. I said, really laugh. Didn't want to look at the receipt. But he went so hard. People make me stay all day long. That's the first thing I explained to them. He's a very good customer. He paid, but it's just crazy. Is he still a customer to this day? Yeah. A small mistake, but make me learn the lesson that like, so careful when you're doing this. Johnny invites us to his neighborhood. Dude, that's real shit. I'm not gonna lie. Course, where we can take a few swings and he drops some nuggets of wisdom on us as the beautiful Houston sun sets. What do you think it is that makes people successful? In life? <sighs> I came from nothing in Vietnam. I'm from real hood in Vietnam, right? I grew up with no electricity, no power. When I Yo, why the fuck y'all niggas all mentioning my flaws and shit, bro? That shit was like two minutes ago. But I look in the chat and niggas still pointing things out about me for why my kids not gonna make the NBA. Nigga, whatever the fuck my future kids set their mind to, they will accomplish that shit. It's that simple, my nigga. If they want to be the best janitor on the fucking planet, then they're going to be the best janitor on the planet. Simple, nigga. I don't give a fuck what they want to do, bro. It would be nice if they played soccer and we could send them to the Saudi League. <laughs> but look, like, they can do whatever they want, but at the end of the day, whatever they're passionate about, bro. Literally, but whatever they're passionate about, feel me? I was a kid, every day we went to forest, we hunt. I eat whatever I caught. A lot of time we don't have rice. No, not porn. All right, maybe not whatever they like. That that can't happen, bro. All right, if that happens, they will, they will be banished, bro. This is this is obvious. Like, if we raise them properly, they won't even have thoughts like that. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Like, I'm telling you, bro. Like, that's, no, that can't happen. Yeah, maybe not everything, huh? Yeah, some things is off the table. I should have clarified. A lot of like weeks, not even days. We don't have rice to eat. We eat whatever we cut. Someday, if I didn't cut anything, I didn't eat well. Vegetable, rats, neck, I eat all. I eat all of them. I hunt bird with no gun, bare hand. Oh, birds. Birds, yeah. It not worse than that. And we survive and I make it. You know what the thing is? Like, maybe he did, bro. Maybe he did hunt birds with his bare hands. I just need to see it. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. When Khabib. When, you remember that rumor about Khabib fighting a bear? I didn't believe that. This nigga fought a bear hmm, and he won? Okay, buddy. But then I saw footage of him fighting a bear. And it changed the way I think about things. Just because something sounds outrageous doesn't mean it's not possible. But sometimes seeing it is like, oh shit, that nigga really did do that thing, bro. Hunting birds with your hands is dumb hard, bro. I know a couple things about birds. A little foreshadowing for later tonight. Do you think luck has any part to play in success? A little bear? I don't give a fuck what size bear. It's a bear, nigga. Complain about you would fight a bear on which conditions? My house, we use mud to build it. No, it's not like regular wood house or regular concrete house. We build by mud. So when rappers say I got it out the mud, you really got it out the mud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a real mud. <laughs> Did you have yeah, a mentor? Bear. I'm look after for my father too. Good That's man. beautiful, when bro. When he sees you coming from Vietnam making $35 a day to a business empire, nice. a mogul, what do they think? It means a lot for him. He's very happy. But my parents, the most appreciate they need from us, really not money, to be honest. They just need us to be grow up as a good person, do well things for community, That's beautiful, as bro. a good person, have a good family. I think that's the key to be a success, just to be a good person. True story, right? When I just started, I started buying a diamond because to, to jewelry, right? I have no credit. Nobody give me credit. So whatever I have cash, I buy it. And then one time, the diamond dealer actually give me one extra bag of the diamond. In the back like seven, eight thousand dollars worth of diamond. I get back to him. And I say, Johnny, you the good man, man. Whatever diamond you need from now, I give you unlimited credit. I could have kept it. He would never know. That's why I learned. You have to be honest. And then I look at my parents. I'm much more lucky than my father. My father got locked up for 10 years and without knowing which day he released. Why did he get locked up? You know, Vietnamese, they have a South and North. Mm -hmm. He the South Vietnamese soldier. He a big time captain. So when the North take over the South, they put all, every soldier in bad condition. So, were you born yet when your father was in prison? Yeah, I How? was two years old. I remember I visit him 
far all the way in the forest. And they take like two, three days on the road just to see him. And then he escaped. He said, okay. He escaped from prison? Yeah, he said prison. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. He got caught. They put him in jail again. Man, they're hanging up here upside down for days. Uh, and he's going to escape again. That's a that they escaped. Yo, that, that deserves a documentary. Am I right or wrong? Right after the Vietnam War, his father was in prison. His father had a real life prison break, escaped to America, and then his son became one of the biggest jewelers on a fucking planet, my nigga. That doesn't deserve a movie. That deserves something, bro. A book, something, my nigga. That's a that's a crazy story. That is an insane story. Vietnam on the boat is running out of gas. So they get floating boat for two weeks. So two weeks, no food. So when he came here, that's just like, okay. Wow. You good? <laughs> Wow. That's how you do God. <laughs> Johnny's putting some smackers out there. Hey, that's a pat it. I guess pat it one more. <laughs> okay, one more. <laughs> Better than Tiger Hood. All right, so bye. So folks, life is a grand old adventure. If you work hard, you apply yourself with this a little bit of, of luck, you can build yourself from Tommy, anything bro. you want. Johnny, any final thoughts for the people out there? Walk hard, be honest, work hard. I make it it's easy for you, man. You can be king of playing diamond boy. Too easy. Yeah, diamond boy. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs> that was a good video, Tommy. That was my favorites, man. No cap. Beautiful. Nigga said tiger. <laughs> Folks, hope you enjoyed this episode. You want to watch another? Here. You want to subscribe? Over here. See you next week. Yeah, that actually, that's a truly inspiring story. My mom is like that too. Uh, where like she will go way out of her way to do the right thing. <laughs> um, I'm like, yeah, that's inspiring, bro. That's beautiful. Oh, so you like the video? Boom. <laughs> You, you're gonna you're like sweet. that one too, man. Go ahead, just. Bro, click the Yo, game. Buddy. What that? Bro, that's what I be saying, like.